I will show you how to travel between the pages and send data from one page to another. So let's get started. So I have a new Android Studio project over here, and I'm going to head on over to activitymain.xml, and you want to change the constraint layout to a relative layout. Now what I'm going to do is have a button that way when it's pressed, we can go to the next page. And the text is going to be Android text equals um, click for next page. I'm going to give it the ID of um, BTN. And I'm going to center it in the parent. So Android layout center in parent equals true. Now that I've done my layout, I'm going to head to mainActivity.java. And in order to travel to a second page, where to create that page, I'm going to create a future short bit segment on the different ways for creating new activities because there are multiple ways. But for now, I'm just going to create it by doing this. You want, you want to right click on the package name underneath the Java folder. And then you go hover over new, then activity and click on empty activity. I'm going to name my new activity page two and then press finish. So while that's running, I'm going to go back to main activity.java. And I'm going to create the button object and the on click listener. So button BTN. Okay, and then in my on create, I'm going to say btn equals find view by id or dot id dot btn, and then I'm going to set the on click listener for that. Now, in order to travel from one page to another in Android, you have to use something called an intent, and you can think of intents as a bus because they take you, the user, from one page to another, and the passengers on the bus would be the data that you can pass in along with the intent, which is optional. So I'm going to create a new intent. And just as I mentioned, we had to specify where we're going from and to. So I'm going to say main activity dot this. And then we're going to page two dot class. That's the activity we're heading to. Now to start the activity, I simply have to say start activity and then pass the intent in and it will launch this. So I'm going to run my app now. So that finished running and you can see here have a button in the center of the page. When I click it, it takes me to the next page. And just really quickly, I like to change the name that's associated with our second page by doing Android label um, and then providing it another name, so page two. And I'll have another short bit segment on this on how to change the app name and icon, so check that out as well. But now that I have this, I'm gonna cover how to pass the data into your intent. So you do this by saying intent.put extra. And if you look here, there's multiple different things we can pass in. We can pass in a boolean, a byte, a character, an integer. For now, I'm just gonna pass in a string saying hello. Our first parameter is going to be uh, the name, as you can see here from the tag, but you can also think of it sort of as a key and value. So if you have experience with uh, maps in Java, like hash maps and tree maps, you can think of this first part as the key and the second part as the value. So in our second activity, to refer to this value over here called hello, we'll have to use the key that we passed in as the first parameter, which is message. And I'm just going to duplicate this line and create a couple more messages, like message one, message two, and message whoops, let me just do that, and then message three, and I'll pass in some other messages like hello, subscribe, and then to IG apps, okay? Now in order to receive this intent from our second page, because we passed in some data, we're going to have to create an intent to receive it. So we say intent, and then I'm gonna say receive intent equals get intent, and this will get the intent. Now, in order to receive this data that I passed from mainactivity.java, what I have to do is refer to the names or keys, as I said earlier. So I'm going to say string message one equals receive intent dot get string extra. And then I have to provide the key or a name. And the name that I gave was message. And then I'm also going to do this for message two. We're saying string message two equals um, get message one. And I'm just going to make a toast to see that I, I have successfully gotten the data. I also have another short bit segment on toast. So if you don't know how to use those, please feel free, feel free to check those out. So I'm going to say message one plus message two. And now I'll run this. And basically what we're doing is verifying that the data we passed in for main activity, our main activity has been received, received in page two. So my app has launched and I'm going to click on this uh, button here and this toast has appeared saying hello and subscribe which if we head back to main activity with the first two messages for message one and just regular plain old message. So now that you know the basics of the intent, I'm going to cover um, 
how to use bundles. Because you may have realized by now, if you have lots of data that you have to pass in, like a lot of lines, it's going to be extremely tedious for you to go to your next page and have to receive each of these values individually. And also, consider a case where you have three pages and you want to send data from page one to page three, but first a user has to go to page two. It's then, in order to do that using just intents, what you'd have to do is in your second page, receive each of those values individually like this, and then put them back in another intent for page three. And this is where the bundle comes into use. So because I have these four values that I'm passing in for main activity, and I don't plan on using them until I reach my third page, I don't need to receive each of the strings individually. Instead, what I can do is create a bundle, and then I can say receive intent dot get extras. And it's have a basically a bundle object containing all of the um, data that I put in my intent. So now for the activity, we're going to create a third activity that's going to launch when we uh, travel to page two and click on a button. So I'm going to copy the layout that I have for my activity main and paste it inside activity page two. And the thing that you want to do is change tools context uh, dot main activity to dot page two or whatever is the name of your activity class. So now I'm going to head back here and I'm going to create a button object, button BTN. I have to import it. And then I'm going to do the same thing or something similar to what I did in uh, main activity. I'm going to find a view by ID and then I'm going to set an on click listener. And then I'll take this code and put it inside my on click listener. And to delete this uh, toast, I'm just going to do control Y. I'm going to create another, uh, I'm going to start a new series called Android how to's where I cover useful tips and tricks in Android studio. So stay tuned for that. And one of my videos will be shortcuts in Android studio. But anyways, now that I have my bundle, in addition to um, passing in the data from page one, I want to send some of my own uh, data from page two. So I'm going to say, I'm going to create a new intent, intent uh, to page three, and it's going to be a new intent from this page, page two dot this to page three. So I haven't created my page three activity yet, and that's where you can see it's red. So I'm going to go ahead and do that now. So new activity and then empty activity. I'm going to call it page three and press finish. So I'm going to go back to page two and now she recognize page three dot class. Now what I want to pass in this intent that's going to page three is I want to pass in the bundle that I got from page one. So I'm going to say uh, page one info. I'm going to pass in this bundle object. Another thing that I want to pass in is um, page two info and say, uh, okay, this is from page two. Then I can start my activity. So to page three. And now to display the data that I'm sending from page two and also from page one from this bundle here, I'm going to go to activity page three and I'm going to change the layout for this page. So the way that I'm going to do that, whoops, is I'm going to change this constraint layout in, in the activity to a relative layout. I'm also going to create a text view that's going to be centered in the parent. That way I can display the results. Uh, so I'm going to say ID equals text and then uh, layout, layout center in parent equals true. Okay, and I think that's about it. So now I have to go to page three and create the text view object. And import it. And then I have to say text equals find view by ID order ID dot text. Now I have to receive the intent. So if you remember it's intent and then you can call whatever you want. I'm going to call it receive intent equals. And then we say get intent to get the intent. Now I'm going to get the bundle that I got from page two that contains the data from page one. So the name that I provided was page one info. I'm just going to copy that. That way I don't make any typos when specifying the key slash name. So I'm going to say bundle page one info equals receive intent dot get bundle extra. And I'll just paste that there, page one info. We're going to do the same thing for page two. So for the page two info, we just pass a string, so that should be simpler. So get string extra. Um, and this time I have to change the pa page one to page two. 
in the name slash key. Now to display the information in the bundle, what I could do is I could go ahead and say page one info dot get string uh, or just get and then provide the key that I made in main activity like message and message one and message two and message three. But, but once again, the whole reason that we used a bundle in uh, our second page was because it's very tedious to get each of the strings individually, like saying um, string message equals receive intent dot get string extra and then we keep on providing keys. So that's why in my third page, what I'm going to do is I'm going to iterate through my bundle. That way I can um, get the keys and then get the values associated with it. So I'm going to say string result. I'm going to create an empty string. Now I'm going to iterate through my bundle by saying for string key. And um, then I'm going to say page one info dot key set. And what this does is it returns a set of keys. So if you're familiar with uh, sets in Java, like hash sets, and tree sets. A set is essentially a list, like it's similar to a list, but um, it, it cannot contain duplicate values. And this over here is a special type of for loop called an enhanced for loop or a for each loop. And it basically iterates through uh, collections, like a set or an array or an array list. So what this is going to do is it's gonna get a set of all the keys or names of our, that are in our bundle, like message, message one, message two, message three, and so on. And the reason that this is useful is because now I can append this to my string called result by saying page one info, which is my bundle dot get. And now I can provide the key that I'm iterating, that I'm getting by iterating through the bundle. So now that I have that, um, actually, I want to add a new line character afterwards. And in my result, I'm going to initialize it by saying page one info. And then afterwards, I'm going to save with result plus equals then a new line character page two info and then uh, another new line character and then page two info and now i'm going to set text to that um, text so result now i'm going to run this in my app so my app has just launched and now here i'm on page one and it says click for next page and it's basically what it's done in the background that we can see is it's made this intent with all this data and passed it to page two then when we click on the click for next page on page two, what it's doing is it's getting a bundle of data from page one and then adding some other data of its own from page two, like uh, this message over here saying this is from page two and it's sending it to page three. And then page three, we're receiving that information. You can see here, it says page one info and it's displaying the information from the bundle that we got from page two. And over here, it's also displaying information from page two. So basically what you learned in this video was how to create an intent and travel from one page to another. You also learned how to pass in values and data to the intent using the name or key, if you want to call it, along with the value. Then you also learned how to receive a bundle of data from, a previous, uh, from the previous page, as well as what a bundle is. And finally, you learned how to iterate through the bundle and receive the data from the intent to display. So I hope you found this video informational and please stay tuned for future videos because I also plan on starting a new series called Android Studio How To's, which I mentioned earlier, which don't really cover coding concepts, but useful tips and tricks in Android Studio, such as this to-do tag over here and what it means. And as I mentioned earlier, um, some shortcuts in Android Studio. But until then, happy developing from IJ Apps.